to the 2016 Sackler Center First Award. I'm Elizabeth Sackler, and I want to thank, thank you. Thank you. I want to thank the Manhattan Country School and their wonderful musical teachers, Susan and Donovan, and their principal, um, Michelle Sola. And I also, um, <clears throat> I have to uh, give full disclosure. Uh, my grandchildren go to the Manhattan Country School. <laughs> But none of my grandchildren are of that age group, so it was not self-serving. <laughs> but it was there that I heard these children, and I thought, what a wonderful way to start this evening. So um, I didn't have to Google for a Manhattan country school, and I wish we had more of them, because uh, actually they learn we shall overcome uh, at age four, when they begin at the school and they sing it every Martin Luther King Day, and they have a sign on the front of the door that says, we welcome immigrants. And in the sixth grade, in the sixth grade, they're learning all about Angela Davis as part of the civil rights curriculum. And so the children who sang here for us this evening know very well why they're here, and they know who they're singing for. So thank you, Angela. For five years, the Sackler Center First Award, we've honored uh, nearly a score of the most powerful women in this country. Anita Hill, Toni Morrison, Sandra Day O'Connor, all of them are listed in your program. And for almost 10 years, the Sackler Center's focus has been on equality, equity, and justice. Equal pay, equal wall space is the mantra for a Council for Feminist Art, and the Council provides support fiscal and creative for the Sackler Center, and I want to thank all of you who are here this evening and our chair, Marilyn Greenberg. During the past, <laughs> thank you, during the past two years plus, the Sackler Center has brought to the forefront the programming and exhibitions of the history and history of injustice and bigotry and the truth and horrors of mass incarceration. States of Denial, the Illegal Incarceration of Women, Children, and People of Color is the Sackler Center's ongoing series funded by Novo Foundation, and Novo is represented here tonight, and I thank you for that. And currently on view is Adjurt Prop, thanks to our wonderful curator, Catherine Morris, and our special sponsors, including with us today, the Embry Family Foundation. And thank you very much, Lauren Embry, who is here, and also the Helene Zucker Seaman Memorial Exhibition Fund. So this evening is particularly special and important. It's an evening as the Sackler Center First Awards honored in one person all that we hold dear, all for which we strive, and all for that we stand. All that has been the foci of our exhibitions and programming, to wit, the fight for freedom, the fight for equity, and the fight for justice. We honor Angela Y. Davis, who for four decades has been as a scholar and intellectual on the political and social forefronts for justice. Angela Davis is synonymous with truth, Angela Davis is synonymous with vibrant revolution, and I am grateful to her and to Gloria Steinem and to all the people who have gathered in solidarity to make this evening possible. We have organizers who are here, Mary Jo Shen, Sophia Elijah, Lola West, Carol Robinson. We have 46 artists in support of social action for this evening honoring Angela Davis. We have 11 in attendance, and I will ask you and the organizers to please stand. Dara Birnbaum, Peter Coyne, Coco Fusco, Deborah Lee, Shola Lynch, who is a director of the movie we're going to see, Carrie Moyer, Faith Ringgold, Charles Simmons, Kiki Smith, Micheline Thomas, and Martha Wilson, thank you. This introduction is filled with a lot of names and I think we should all revel in them because those uh, 11 are also joined in spirit, who could not be with us tonight, 35 artists, Marina Abramovic, Gada Amir, Ida Applebrug, Harry Belafonte, Tony, Tony Bennett, Judy Collins, Kasim Dean, Jane Fonda, Alan Gilbert, Harmony Hammond, 
Tony Kushner, Suzanne Lacey, Wynton Marsalis, Audra McDonald, Marilyn Minter, Tony Morrison, Shira Nashat, Jesse Norman, Lauren O'Grady, Yoko Ono, Suzanne Laurie Parks, Carolee Schneeman, Joan Semmel, Cindy Sherman, Joan Snyder, Susan Stroman, Susan L. Taylor, Julie Tamor, Fred Tomaselli, Kathleen Turner, Kara Walker, Carrie Mae Weems, Ray Charles White, and Domaine Wetzel, and I thank them all for joining us this evening. It's a lot of names and a lot of people to thank, but this has been an important evening, and one of the things that makes it all the more important is that I'm thrilled to welcome in our audience representatives and guests from five organizations that work tirelessly to end our country's policies of mass incarceration and state-sanctioned violence. They are organizations that support incarcerated and post-incarcerated people and fight for social equity. I ask you to please stand the Bard Prison Initiative, people who are here. Black Lives Matter, New York Chapter, Brooklyn Community Bail Fund, College and Community Fellowship, Girls for Gender Equity, and the Women's Prison Association. Thank you. Thank you for standing. Thank you for letting us honor you and your work. And thank you to Tamara and Greg Belafonte, to Donna Ben Anari and Nicola Durakovich, and Clara Bingham and Joseph Finnerty, Barbara and Richard Debs, Henry Elsesser, Sharon Fay and Maxine Schaefer, Diane Karp, Hetty Kleinman, Marjorie Marte, Mary Jo, and Theodore Shen, Star, Starry Fun Night for sponsoring the seat so that we could have these people here. We thank you very, very much. On a personal note, I would like to say that I'm delighted that Ann Pasternak, who is our new and enthusiastic director, is uh, sitting here as our director for the first Sackler Center First Awards, and I'd like to welcome you here. And once again, it's an honor to have our First Lady, the First Lady of New York, with us to celebrate the Sackler Center First Awardees. And despite what the New York Post says, uh, Ms. McRae doesn't have to pay for the pleasure of being here with us tonight. She is the First Lady of the City of New York, and she honors the Brooklyn Museum with her presence and, of course, as our guests. Please join me in welcoming the First Lady of New York City, Shirley McCray. Good evening, everyone. I want you to know I don't feel like a guest. This is my home. This is Brooklyn, right? <laughs> I want to thank you, Elizabeth, for that wonderful introduction, your partnership, your support, and your relentless commitment to amplifying the voices and visions of women everywhere. Oh, Brooklyn, I love it. <laughs> so much energy in this room. I wish we could, you know, change the world with it. <laughs> so I am grateful for the opportunity to, to introduce an abridged version of Free Angela and All Political Prisoners, the masterful documentary by Shola Lynch. That title alone tells you a lot about why we are here tonight. When Angela Davis was in prison, her allies formed a defense committee, and they were planning to call it the, United, the National United Committee to Free Angela Davis. It was Davis who insisted that they call it the National United Committee to Free Angela Davis and All Political Prisoners. Because she knew that the struggle was much bigger than just her. Yes, Angela was and is an icon. I was 15 years old when she went underground 
And let me tell you, seeing her on the news with her stunning afro and her fist raised in defiance was nothing short of electrifying. But if Angela was not more than her proud locks or her power salute, we wouldn't be here tonight. She endures because she cannot be contained to a single era or episode. Angela was a revolutionary before she was in the news, fighting for black power while pushing her male compatriots to make room for the sisters. She certainly was a revolutionary during her celebrated trial, when she stood strong and tall in the eye of a media storm. And she is a revolutionary today, applying her fierce intellect to a most worthy mission of dismantling the prison industrial complex. Her steadfast commitment to returning all power to the people is perhaps Angela's greatest legacy and lesson. Over the past few years, millions of minds have been awakened or reawakened by the tragic truncated stories of Trayvon Martin, Eric Garner, Tamir Brown, Freddie Gray, Michael Brown, Sandra Bland, Tanisha Anderson, Natasha McKenna, and so many others who did not make the headlines but should have. The challenge before us now is to stay woke, as some of our young people say. This movement we're a part of isn't looking for part-time help. We need lifetime members. We need people who are all in, all the time. We need people like Angela. And I'm reminded of another Sackler First Award winner, Toni Morrison, who is also a member of Artists in Support of Social Action, which stands in solidarity with Angela. Ms. Morrison once wrote that the function of freedom is to free someone else. I'm going to say that again. The function of freedom is to free someone else. Angela embodies those words. Even when her own freedom was in jeopardy, she never stopped fighting to free someone else. I am honored to welcome Angela Y. Davis to Brooklyn, and I hope you are all inspired by the film as I was. Thank you. Professor Angela Davis admitted that she is a member of the Communist Party. Who put her on the top ten? Everybody had a file on it. Her first lecture drew 2,000 students. Angela's education is now being put into practice. Angela Davis purchased four guns. There is a conspiracy in the land. It's a conspiracy to wipe out the black community as a whole. Well, I think she's trying to overthrow our system of government, and she admits that. The actions of the FBI in apprehending Angela Davis are rather remarkable story. A U.S. District Court judge set bail at $100,000. She knows that the movement to free all political prisoners is growing every day. This entire incident was a deliberate provocation. They wanted to break me. They wanted me to respond. There was enormous feeling for Angela everywhere in the world. We know that she is innocent. We want to tell that Pharaoh in Washington to let Angela Davis go free. What they're doing to her is an exaggerated form of what happens every day to black people in this country. What does it mean to be a criminal in this society? They are not going to kill her. They're not going to imprison her. We're going to free her. We're going to win her freedom. Well, thank you. <clears throat> Welcome to the People's Republic of the Brooklyn Museum. <laughs> I'm so honored that you're here. I, I don't think, I mean, how many tears are there? <laughs> I don't think you know how much you have been part of our lives. How, how many people in our lives have been here? And, you know, 
I, it's really hard to imagine how you feel watching it. But I know there are people in this audience who are going through tough times, not on a global scale, <laughs> as, as you did. Um, but what helped you survive? What can you, what comes to mind that you want to pass on to folks in this audience who are having trials, personal trials? Well, first of all, can I say that I'm really happy to be in Brooklyn? <laughs> which was my home for a few years, during my high school years. I lived on St. Mark's Avenue and Kingston. <laughs> and went to high school in um, the village, and one of my high school classmates is here, Kathy Boudin. <laughs> So it's really, it's, it's really wonderful to be here in New York, and it's, 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 it's really great to see you, uh, Gloria. It's been a while, a few years since we've seen each other, and I'd like to thank um, Elizabeth for you know, organizing this event. And thank you. So, um, your question. Um, I think, I mean, I th I've pondered this question uh, often uh, because there were times when, of course, I was quite frightened and, you know, absolutely certain that this was so enormous that there was nothing we could do that uh, could uh, um, defeat their plan to either send me to the gas chamber or uh, to prison for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and, you know, what, I suppose what made me feel capable of, uh, you know, getting up every day and moving forward and continuing was the fact that there were so many other people involved in this struggle. This was not my struggle alone. Uh, and I had, um, just a few months prior to my own arrest, uh, when I was doing work around the Soledad Brothers case, I can remember uh, giving speeches and, and, and saying to people, you have to join the campaign to free the Soledad Brothers. No one knows who will be next? Uh, you could be next. Uh, and I had no idea at that time that I was actually referring to myself. Uh, but I think that so many people were willing to come forward and join the campaign because they knew that I had been involved. Uh, and, and what made me feel less fearful um, and more capable of confronting whatever the future might bring was the fact that I was not alone. And even today when um, um, people, you know, talk about my story and, you know, there are some people our age who, who remember uh, uh, the whole uh, situation from many, many, many years ago. You know, I have to, I have to insist that it, 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 it really was not about me. Uh, I was the target of those charges, not because of what I had done as an individual, but because of what the movement was doing at that time. And so I can only see myself as as being one of many others, uh, uh, and, and, and that helped me. That helped me because I didn't feel alone. Uh, and I knew that what ha whatever happened, even if, 
it had turned out that I was sentenced to death. I knew that I wouldn't be walking into that death chamber alone. Mm -hmm. And this is what movements are for. And this right. is exactly what right. movements right. are for. So would you advise uh, any folks here having a tough time to make sure? Build community, yes, right. yes, build community. Uh, and you know, I, was, I had this wonderful conversation with uh, teenagers, uh, uh, high school students, uh, and um, uh, some of the people who are involved in the education program here at the, the Brooklyn uh, Museum. Uh, and I mean, it was, it was an amazing conversation. I was saying, we should, we should have brought all of them up on stage with us uh, to uh, uh, continuing it. But, you know, but, 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 I, but I was saying that it's so important for us to recognize that we are more than individuals. We are so much more than individuals. We often think of ourselves only as individuals, even when we experience trauma, even when we think that, uh, that we are totally alone, actually we're connected to, to people you know, all over the world uh, who experience the same kind of traumas. And if only we can gather the strength and the courage that comes from feeling a part of a larger community, then um, we can accomplish all kinds of things. Uh, And I, think, and I think that is what happened in my case. We achieved the impossible. We achieved what nobody believed was possible. And I was telling them, I said, we were a right, well, you saw the images of, of uh, Ronald Reagan and Richard Nixon and J. Edgar Hoover, you know, who were considered to be the most powerful men in the world. So. Uh, and where are they now? Yes. <laughs> The question is, where are we now? Yes, right, right, right. Well, I also, I just want to ask you one other question, which I don't know if it has an answer or not, but is there anything about this that still makes you feel misunderstood? You know, because feeling misunderstood is a form of invisibility. Is there anything you want to tell us? I mean, Shola, thank you for this incredible film. <laughs> But I know it's, it's r real hard to get such complexity, you know, into such a short space. Yeah, and Shola did an amazing job. The, 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 I had not seen so much of that footage. Um, and I t t told Shola that I had no idea how the FBI was able to capture me uh, <laughs> until I saw <laughs> this film. That's true. <laughs> Um, and there, there are a couple of things that you didn't get to see uh, because it's, a, what, about uh, 40 minutes cut out? Yeah, yeah about f 40 minutes that you didn't get to see. And you should um, all see the whole thing. And, right. and, and, and one of the things that's really um, interesting in the film and in the campaign was how I got out on bail. Uh, because had I not been released on bail, I don't know uh, what uh, uh, would have been the consequences uh, in the, the actual courtroom. And I got out on bail because this, um, a white farmer from Fresno, California, offered to put up his entire farm. Uh, and I mean, the story is told in the film, but Aretha Franklin had said that she was, if, if I ever received bail, that she would uh, um, go the bail. But um, she was somewhere in the West Indies and it was impossible to um, transfer funds in the way we do now. You know, it was a different stage of capitalism uh, at that era. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, and 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 I don't know the the, the story is so, somewhat complicated, but there were only a couple of days in which that might have been possible because the 
California Supreme Court had just overturned the death penalty temporarily in California. That meant that suddenly I was eligible for bail. Uh, and because there had been uh, organizing all over the world, as soon as that decision came down from the, from the Supreme Court, uh, of California, uh, people started calling and sending telegrams. Yeah, that was the way we communicated in those days. <laughs> uh, and and it, was, it was only as a result of that combination of, of mass, uh, massive movement pressure and this person who had been touched by the movement, who knew that uh, we didn't have uh, the, it was $100,000, I think. That doesn't sound like a lot of money today, but it was more probably, it was more like a million dollars or, or, or more mm -hmm. in those days. Uh, and, and, and that's how I actually got mm -hmm. out of jail. Uh, but that's a great lesson. I mean, yeah. it's a lesson from the support that everything we do matters, in fact or at least we have to behave as if everything we do matters because we don't know which thing really will. And also that the unexpected, that this white farmer, I mean, did you, you met him, I'm, right? Oh, yes, yeah. yes, we became very good friends, Roger yeah. McAfee. Right. Of course we what, would become say friends. Say his name. Right? His, <laughs> we we want to hear his name again. Roger Let's, McAfee. Okay, here's to Roger. Roger McAfee. <laughs> And, and what did he say about why he did it? Well, he, you know, he, um, in, his, in his heart, he felt that he had to be willing. He believed in justice, and he was a socialist at, at heart. As a matter of fact, after uh, my trial was over, he ended up uh, uh, going to Cuba and um, getting involved in some agricultural projects there. Uh, uh, but yeah, he 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 was um, the embodiment of that movement. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he was one of millions and millions of people, uh, and 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 I, I think that's what it means to build a movement. Mm -hmm. uh, no, and uh, also to be surprised. You know, because he was not the person you thought was going to come forward. No, right? absolutely not. So we always not. need to look beyond what we think are the indicators, you know, and really speak directly. And, you know, I was thinking while you were talking about how tough it was, that there's a form of this going, the kind, I mean, an electronic form, sort of, of the kinds of accusations and misunderstandings and so on that you suffered. And, you know, and I would just like to say that as one completely safe white woman living in Manhattan, I, one of my uh, relatives disowned me because, uh, you know, I supported you. I mean, I, I didn't miss him, I have to say. that He was, <laughs> <laughs> he was not a nice guy. Uh, and I was giving a commencement address at Queens College, I think, and I, it was the day that you were exonerated. Oh, really? And I said to the, all the graduates, you will always remember your graduation mm -hmm. because this is the day you know, mm -hmm. Angela Davis was set free. Yeah, June, June 4th. And, and all of the graduates cheered and a lot of their parents booed. <laughs> so, it, you know, it was, it was serious, you know, it was all kinds of people well, who my should... Well, my mother said she uh, discovered who her real friends were uh, because, uh, of course, when I was underground, especially there were those who uh, disassociated themselves entirely from her in Birmingham, Alabama, you know, who wants okay. to be associated with a black communist revolutionary. Uh, <laughs> My mother said, I do. <laughs> she raised her fist. <laughs> I would like to say, just for, as a little aside, that communism is so American. I mean, because Marx and Engels were inspired by the 
Iroquois Confederacy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's under our feet. Kind of, right. There's a long, long history of uh, socialist and communist activism in this country. Yeah. Well, what's great is that now it's possible um, to criticize capitalism in ways that was impossible during those days. So. And so, you know, we have to thank the Occupy movement for uh, creating, opening the space and creating mm -hmm. a new vocabulary uh, uh, and allowing us to uh, uh, say that uh, something about this capitalist system uh, is really, really rotten and needs to be changed, needs to be radically transformed. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Well, you know, let's, let's talk about movements now, because I do think that there's cause for great hope at the same time that there is clear backlash and craziness, and, you know, it's like the, we may have the majority in terms of issues, but the backlash against it is so powerful and crazy and named Trump and all this <laughs> bullshit that's around right now. Uh, so, you know, what, what gives you hope now? I mean, Black Lives Matter was Absolutely. founded by three young black women, right? Absolutely, yes. And um, uh, I should say their names. Patrice Alicia, Colors, Opal Alicia Garza, and Alicia Garza. And Opal Tamati, right, mm -hmm. right. We, it's important to say their names. <laughs> and uh, they have three guidelines, which I totally love. Uh, lead with love. That's a little California, but still it's a good one. Okay. <laughs> uh, two, low ego, high impact. Don't you love that? And three, move at the speed of trust. That mm. I totally love. So, t t t and at the same time, they have, um, they're wrongly accused. I mean, there was just a woman who was convicted in California, right, a Black Lives Matter leader in California. Yeah. Who was, con yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, I just saw Jasmine three days ago, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, in Southern California. And, um, and she asked, um, the same question that you asked me earlier, uh, you know, what did you do uh, to maintain your um, strength and, and where did the courage come from? Mm -hmm. uh, and I gave her the same answer about community and um, ensuring her that we were not going to let her go to jail, but in the event that she did go, uh, that she would not be alone. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but Black Lives Matter is, uh, this is what we've been waiting for. Uh, this, is, uh, this, is a, this is a historical conjuncture where, uh, you know, all of, the th all of the ingredients came together um, in uh, an amazing way. And um, Opal and Patrice and uh, Alicia, they were able to, to read uh, the times and understand that this is uh, what we need at this moment. Mm -hmm. uh, and it has legs, I think, in a way that is as important as Occupy is, didn't have the same kind of visceral lasting power. Well, I don't like know about that because I think, I think it's important for us to see uh, these um, moments as connected. Mm. And no, so, no. Yeah. And, yeah. and Occupy, of course, it was impossible to have an unending encampment, right? It, mm. That had to come to an end, but the consequences are still with us. Uh, we, we have this new vocabulary, we have new movements against, against eviction, and I see Black Lives Matter and all of the organizations and, uh, and formations that have emerged, say, since Trayvon Martin in, in 2012, as linked. So you have Occupy mm -hmm. in 2011, right? And then uh, this, uh, you, you have the upsurge against uh, the, uh, the killing of Trayvon Martin in 2012. Troy Davis, uh, we almost managed to prevent him from being executed. 
And, and so, and then of course, uh, uh, in, in Florida, you have the uh, emergence of the Dream Defenders, who are mm. still going strong. Mm. And then you have organizations that develop in New York, and uh, you know, Justice League in New York, uh, Black, BYP 100, uh, Black Youth Project in mm. Chicago. So all of this is connected. Uh, and um, I think that this is a moment uh, when there is so much promise, so much potential. And of course, we never know what the outcome is going to be. We can never, we can never predict the consequences of the work that we do. But um, as, uh, as I always like to say, we have to, and I, th and I think uh, somebody found a quote of me saying this somewhere, I saw it on the screen. Uh, we have to act as if it is possible to build a revolution and to radically transform the world. And, and, and let me say that if people had not been doing the work, this wouldn't have happened. If you look, if you look at the three women who are uh, the co-founders of Black Lives Matter, they're all activists. They were all trained in, 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 in work, for example, Opal does uh, 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 work on immigrant rights, and um, Patrice, whom I knew uh, before uh, Black Lives Matter emerged, has, has been involved in uh, building campaigns against um, police violence uh, in Los Angeles. Uh, she, she's also trained by the Bus Riders Union. And then Alicia Garza has been working with the Domestic Workers Alliance and has been doing that work for many years. Right. So these are all seasoned activists. It didn't just happen. Mm. It didn't just happen because they said Black Lives Matter. Right. <laughs> No, it's like in Rosa Parks. Rosa Parks did not just sit down on the bus. Yeah, she, but, yeah exactly, right. Exactly. Exactly. Right. And you know, the civil rights movement didn't just happen. Right. Now we've forgotten all of the 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 activism of the '30s because because communists were involved, right? And 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 you know, Rosa Parks can be uh, depicted as this um, you know nice woman seamstress. <laughs> But people don't realize that she was, she, was, she was an activist against rape. She did dangerous work. Uh, she was a trained activist. Uh, yeah, and she was investigating a sexual assault case she at the bus stop, and yeah. Exactly. No, well, exactly. I think so, I, I'm getting a little sig time signal. Oh, How much more time I knew this have? was going to happen. Just as we got into our yeah, conversation, right. we were okay, told there's just, that it's time to there, end. <laughs> there, there's so much, so much that we want to thank you for, and that we want to <laughs> Well, you know, there Ask is something you, that, I would, that I would really like to say. Okay, um, good, good. Uh, and, because, and I think it's a good way to conclude. Uh, and I think that we saw it in the film, the emphasis on uh, global connections and global solidarities. Uh, uh, in the US, we are encouraged to think that we are the only people in the world who really matter, you know? And, Sometimes even revolutionaries think that revolutionaries from the US know more than revolutionaries from, say, uh, Brazil or from Palestine. Uh, uh, and I think it's so important now to cultivate the international, the global connections. Uh, and and the, the, the work that is being done around justice for Palestine is so central to the development of healthy, <laughs> radical activism in the United States of America. So I just needed to say that. <laughs> well, I think the fact that we were together in this room with such incredible people, I hope you all meet each other. You have to promise me to turn to the great person next to you, because you are a great person. <laughs> and figure out what outrageous act you're going to do tomorrow and the next day. And, the next day. <laughs> and because you have given us such hope and such an example that we 
are indeed all linked. We are not ranked, mm -hmm. and that we can behave that way. Mm -hmm. And we thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you so much for your work. Thank you. As Gloria said, thank you, thank you, and thank you. And if you would allow me, I would like to present you with the Sacker Center First Award with a bow to the final paragraph written by James Baldwin as an open letter to my sister, Angela Y. Davis, in your 1971 book, Angela Y. Davis and Other Political Prisoners, if they come for you in the morning. And I quote, the enormous revolution in black consciousness, which has occurred in your generation, my dear sister, means the beginning or the end of America. Some of us, white and black, know how great a price has already been paid to bring into existence a new consciousness, a new people, an unprecedented nation. If we know and do nothing, we are worse than the murderers hired in our name. If we know, then we must fight for your life as though it were our own, which it is, and render impassable with our bodies the corridor to the gas chambers. For if they take you in the morning, they will be coming for us that night. Therefore, peace, Brother James, November 19, 1970. accepting this award that uh, we need these struggles more than ever uh, during this time. Uh, we, yes. We've talked about the emergence of uh, new movements, but what we haven't referred to is the extent to which um, um, uh, racism has been revealed uh, uh, in, in ways that uh, many of us who are seasoned activists had thought it uh, had been con consigned to the dustbin of history. So we see this, uh, the, 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 we see, and I, you know, I, I, I often feel that by mentioning Trump's name, I'm conjuring up uh, this figure, uh, but I will say that uh, we have learned how important it is uh, to prevent uh, uh, Donald Trump from uh, winning the election. We have to do whatever is necessary. Right? We cannot, be, we cannot feel politicized during the months preceding the election and then decide that it's, it's, it's okay to go back to doing what we were doing before. Uh, so I would like to thank you and the Sackler Center for this award. Thank you so much, uh, Elizabeth. Thank you, uh, Gloria. And uh, let's 
get the organizing going.